Forever Science Club. And for today, I actually found this toy in my old toy chest. Does anyone know what it's called? It's called a Wooly Willy. Um, it's a weird, strange toy. I mean, you play with the magnet and you move around these hairs and you give them a dupee, a beard, whatever you want. But for, for today, Ms. Jack is going to come around and pass out these Wooly Willies to each pair. So, what I want you to do is play with it, of course, but also make observations. Why is the hair moving? What is this? What's going on? Why is the magnet moving these hairs? So, in a few minutes, I want you to discuss with your partner what's going on in the observations you'll make. We'll come back together as a class and we'll discuss all the observations everyone's made. So, how does this toy work, guys? What did you guys observe? The magnet moves the hair. The magnet moves the hair. That's really good. All right, so that actually brings us to a question of today. How can we tell the difference between a metal, non-metal, and a metalloid? All right, so before we begin today, I want you to go ahead and turn and talk to your shoulder partner and come up with at least five different physical properties that you can observe. All right, so Claire, what did you have come up with? Malleability. Malleability, very good. Mary, what did you have come up with? Luster. Luster? All right, so we're going to go ahead and pass out the worksheet. It's a physical properties worksheet. Mr. Pedro is going to pass it out. And we're going to show it up on the dot cam. So our first word is brittle. So what is brittle anyway? Easy to break. Easy to, easy to break. So on our worksheets, we're going to go ahead and write brittle, easily broken. All right, now that you have that written down, so I'm going to give you an example. This piece of chalk here actually is an example of being brittle. So I can break it pretty easily without much effort. So what about malleable? So if I said malleable was the opposite of brittle, what do you think that would be, Edward? Not easily broken. Not easily broken. Very good. So go ahead and write that on your worksheets. So here I have some examples for you. So I have a copper wire. So notice I can bend it, I can twirl it, and it's not going to break very easily unless I cut it with some scissors maybe. But I also have a different form of copper. Here's a penny. So this penny is the same material, but I can't really bend it much. But it's also not easily broken. So malleable means you can pound it to change the shape, or if it's something lighter like our wire, you can bend it to change the shape, but you can't break it. So the next one on our list is luster. So what is an example of luster, Mary? Shiny. Shiny, so yeah, right. So luster is an example of shiny or dull, or we're going to use the more scientific terms. Um, we're going to say luster is how metallic or non-metallic an object is. So go ahead and write that on your sheet of paper. <clears throat> All right, so our next vocabulary word is conductor. Can everyone say conductor with me? Conductor. conductor. So a conductor is something that is a substance that allows heat and electricity to pass through easily. So turn and talk to your partners briefly for an example of a conductor. All right, Clara, what did y'all come up with? Metal. Metal, very good. So here, this copper wire I just showed you, this is a great conductor. So you probably notice something you plug in, um, like your laptops, computers, maybe you're charging your cell phone. It has a metal similar to this copper wired for the electricity to flow through. So what is an insulator? Edward? Something that does not allow heat or electricity to flow through. Right, so go ahead and turn and talk to your partner and write down this definition and give me an example of an insulator. All right, so Claire, what is an example of an insulator? Plastic, right. So rubber is also an example of an insulator. So that's why when you see the wires, they're usually coated in something that's an insulator so we don't get shocked whenever we're touching it. So we're going to be using all of these different properties today to observe some metals, non-metals, and metalloids. So we will be looking, observing them, and filling out our chart here to see whether it's brittle, 
malleable, how the luster is, if it's metallic or non-metallic, or as Meg said, shiny or dull, or whether it's a conductor or an insulator. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and pass out some job cards. Remember, you should get a different job than you got last week, and go ahead and take 30 seconds after you get your job card to read to your group so you know what you're responsible for this week. And now, Mr. Pedro is gonna go over a new tool that we have, it's called a multimeter. Can everyone say that with me? Multimeter. Very good. All right, so with this tool, we need to make sure to, uh, for some, a couple of things before we start. So, we're gonna set our multimeter to 200 ohms. So the dial should be pointing down, as you can see here. So we're gonna use our multimeter to check whether this, to check whether our materials are conductors or insulators. It's gonna check the resistance to see how much electricity can go through, or heat. All right, so raise your hand if you're my materials manager. All right, very good. So you are going to go ahead and come up, and we're going to pass out some materials where you're going to get a little egg carton like this, and it's going to have different metals, non-metals, and metalloids in here for you to test with your group. You're going to be working in your group support today, so make sure you grab one set of materials for your group. But before we do that, I also want to go over some safety rules. So make sure, remember, we're not going to eat anything in our containers here um, and we're also not going to make sure it stays in the container and only taking it out as you are testing it. So materials managers, if you want to go ahead and come up and grab your set of materials for today. And also for the multimeter, make sure the ends are kind of sharp, so make sure you're not poking anyone with those. So you can add all your data that you observe um, for your examples. So you're going to write down what element you have and then you're going to go ahead and do the different testing or the observations that we went over. This last column, we're going to go over that in just a bit so you can go ahead and leave that column blank. So now that we observe some metals and non-metals, we're going to color in our periodic table. Is everyone, has everyone seen the periodic table before? Yes. yes? So what, is, what does the periodic table have? Elements. Elements. So today we're going to color in which ones are metals, non-metals, and which ones are metalloids. So our metals, are. we're going to choose a color. For our purposes, we're going to choose green as metal. And we're going to color all the metals on the periodic table. So which side do you think the metals are on? The left, the right, or the middle? The left. The left, correct. So, we're going to color everything to the left green. So, everything except which element on the left side? Hydrogen. Hydrogen, right. Because hydrogen is a gas. So, we know that's not a metal. So, be sure you're coloring in with us as we do it up here. All right, now we're going to choose blue for our metalloids. Our metalloids are actually in a weird shape. They go like, in, like an escalator. So it starts from boron, the letter B as we see there. So we're going to color boron down, all the way down to RN and AT. And remember, we said blue for metalloids in our purposes. And then what do, we ha what do we have left, Clara? The non-metals. The non-metals. So we're going to color the last 
group in, the, in our periodic table, the metalloids, red. So you should be filling out your periodic table as we do it up here. So remember, these are the non-metals. So now that we have our final two rows in the very bottom, it's just a continuation if you see the numbers from 58 and 57 on the LA. So, what color do you think the last two rows are, Mary? Green. Green, right. So those two rows are metals. So now that you have your periodic table all colored in, you should be able to fill in the last column on, your, on the data worksheet. Alright, so what types of metals did you experiment with today? Zinc. I'm sorry, what was that? Zinc. Zinc? And Copper. Very good. So did you experiment and test any metalloids? Yes. Which Silicon. ones? Okay. Any others? No. And what about the non-metals? Sulfur and carbon. All right, so now we're going to go back to the vocabulary worksheet and fill out those last few properties. All right, so now we're going to go back to our data worksheets here under our vocabulary of our properties we talked about. So we're going to put an X on the table if that property applies. Go ahead and take a few minutes, and based on your observations of the items we tested, you can go ahead and try to fill out this on your own, and then we're going to go over it as a class. All right, so Mr. Pedro is going to go ahead and fill out this as we go over it. And now that you went ahead and worked with your partner, so Mary, what did you and your shoulder partner get for brittle? Is it metals, non-metals, or metalloids? We got non-metals and metalloids. So non-metals and metalloids. So we're going to go ahead and put X's under those items. All right, so malleable. Clara, what did you and your shoulder partner get for that? Metals. Metals. Are there any others? No. All right, very good. We're gonna, you should have an X under that one. And now luster. So remember if it was shiny or dull or if it had a metallic or non-metallic features. So uh, Edward, what did you think for that one? Luster. Which, so is it metallic? Which of those Metal. are the example? Metals? Yeah. Very good. And metalloids. And metalloids. Hence, they both have the names metals in them. So metals are typically shiny and have a luster of a metallic luster. All right, so conductors and insulators. So which of your items that you tested are conductors? Metal and metalloid. Metal and metalloids. And so which were insulators? Non-metals. Non All right, very good. All right, so now we are going to move on to our elaborate. So here I have an example of some cereal. So is, are there metals in cereal? No. What kind of things do you think metal is in? Do you have metal in your body? Yes. When why you do you have think? Races. When you have braces? So Edward, why do you think you have metal in your body? I was told that there was iron in my so you might have iron in your blood. So let's see, we have a total cereal here. So if we look at this nutrition label on the dot cam so everyone can see it. And we look under, see here it says iron. How much iron does it have for your daily value that you need? 100%. 100%. That's quite a bit of iron, right? What else? What other um, metal did you experiment with today? Zinc. So you had tested zinc today, too. So that also has how much? 100%. 100%. Right, of your daily value. So let's see if I put some cereal in this water, if I can use a magnet to drag it from one end to the other. So I'm going to go ahead and test that out. What do you see that's happening? It's moving, right? So it's actually working. So you can see that the total has metal inside of it. So that way the magnet is able to drag it. All right, so now you're going to show off what you've learned today by answering a few questions on your own. Then we'll go over it as a class. We're going to go ahead and pass those out. So now we're going to go over the show it well you know. 
So, for the first question we have, which of the following is not a characteristic of a metal? C, brittle. C, that's correct. But is that the only answer, Clara? Didn't you have another answer? I got D. D, it's also not a good insulator. Yes, so metals are brittle and not good insulators, are not brittle and not good insulators. For number two, Mrs. Smith's science class tested some unidentified materials to determine if they were metals, non-metals, or metalloids. The chart below shows their findings. Based on this information, which of these materials is a non-metal? B. B, that's correct. So now we're going to move on to number three. A metal pot with rubber handles containing water is being heated on a, on a stove. After 10 minutes of heating, the metal is very hot, but the rubber handles are only slightly warm. This happens because the rubber is? A. A, a poor conductor, correct. So now for the final question. Richard has four wires that are identical in appearance, each made of different percentages of metals and non-metals. He uses each wire to complete a circuit that lights up a light bulb. Which circuit has the wire with the highest percentage of metal? A. A, the circuit with the brightest light bulb. That is correct. So, on that note, we are finally able to answer our question of the day. How can we tell the difference between a metal, non-metal, and metal light? We just use their physical properties and anything that we can observe. So that's all we have for you today. So we'll see you guys next week.